Okay, hopefully this is working, and it's my first time I'm trying a screen capture program. So let's uh, see how successful this is. Okay, I just want to make a quick video, hopefully it's a quick video, about uh, my progress with uh, some of the pro pro programs that have come with the um, Unity, or that I have installed with Unity. Um, I tried uh, both the inverse schematics plugins. I bought both of them. Uh, one is called 3D Puppet, and the other is called uh, Bio IK. I'm having troubles with the Bio IK because I think it's passing uh, or it's skipping over the uh, rotational values um, because it's using the IK chain to to make new rotational values. So these values didn't seem to do anything at all in bio um, IK. So I'm, for this test, I'm using the Puppet 3D, but I don't think this is a s necessarily the correct solution for it as well. So um, here's bio IK, and this is the demo. Seen it came with the, uh, I think it's called Puppet. Let me see if I can find it. It's called Puppet 3D. So a quick Unity um, walk around. This is the asset folder. So this has basically all of the plugins and things that you need to get your scene going. Uh, this is the hierarchy. So if you have set up, um, you have inverse schematic set up or just the components that are in the scene. So that's it's really neat. So you need this window, this window kind of just tells you, this is basically puts everything into folders nice and neat for your project. Then you have the inspector, uh, which basically uh, tells you what is in the stack for each part. So if you p choose a part over here, um, so in this instance, we're gonna move the head, which is gonna move the servos, which is down here. And uh, what I did was I chose head control group. Um, I tried doing the head controller here in the IK and it didn't work. So I think you have to go down one and manually control it with here from here. Um, so I don't know if this is a complete IK setup yet. I'm still working on it. Um, so this worked out successfully. So if I go to another object and choose it, you're not gonna see the um, Ardu Unity plugin. Uh, which I've already plugged in the items that needed to be here for the head con to connect to the head. But if I chose another item like neck, you're not going to see those items there. It's just uh, so you can see positional information, rotational information, scale information, and then add component. This is where you would add the plugin components onto this particular object to get it to do what you want it to do. So hopefully that understands. So you really only need three parts of Unity, and that's the inspector, that's the hierarchy in project and really these two are just allowing you to choose what you want on screen and um, over here the inspector is like the most important part um, <clears throat> but this is obviously what we want to try to avoid using is this our our unity plugin which I downloaded which does some great things but is really flaky I mean it's the I'll be curious to see if I can get through this tutorial without it crashing or freeze it just freezes up unity really badly but it's um it's the part that we want to replace and get unity talking with easy b directly so that we don't have we could skip all this other stuff but um, for this demonstration i went ahead and set up the head um, ahead of time uh, with these two rotational values um, for the head moving left and right and moving up and down just to move these two servos that I have uh, in the middle of the screen down here. So what I have is, um, the other cool thing that the program does is once you set up the, the servos and attach them to uh, the rotational values, it automatically creates a sketch for you that you then export the sketch and it goes right um, out to the Arduino and, and sets everything up so that you can um, you don't have to uh, do anything more once that sketch has already been uploaded for a particular character. So let me give you kind of a rundown of the things that I had to do to set up just this head for its rotational value. So here we have the, the app which um, allows you to, um, uh, I 
I guess export out once you set these other items up down below. You have the COM serial port. This tells you what port you're connected into and the baud rate is automatically set at uh, uh, 115.2. Um, I don't know if that's changeable but that's where the default was and I'm leaving it there. And then we have two generic servos that we set up, one and two. One is tracking um, one, okay, oh, first, yes, uh, for each, once you each set up each one, then you need to set up an ID, just like we would in uh, Easy Builder. So for this instance, this is um, ID number zero, and this is ID one, and this is connected to the uh, board uh, on pin two, and this is on pin four. So, but each one of these ID numbers has to be different um, for each servo. So if I added more servos, just like you do you plug the servo into the board, you have to have an ID number to find it. This is ID zero, ID one, two, three, four, is, is for as many servos as you have. Um, then we have these two which are connected and added in and they are for um, basically, uh, this is like variable watch in Easy Builder. This is um, watching for the rotational value of whatever I want it to look for. So for in this instance, I'm looking for the Z value or the rotational value that's up here, right here. This is going to read that value for um, one servo and then this will do the Y value for the other servo. Um, I can show you here really quickly the wire editor, how I have it set up. Um, so this comes with that plugin. Basically, you have your COM port um, connected to the app. And then in the app, you have the generic servo one and generic servo two. And I think you can retitle these so you know exactly what's what. But you can see here where it has the ID zero and the pin number, ID number, pin number. And then the two owners then go into the app. So these are, um, I don't know, any of you have ever used wiring but it basically it's just like a, a little cable so if I click on this it disconnects it and then to just you bring it you bring it where you want it to connect and it lights up white where is the most logical place for it to be plugged into so plugged into here and then we have the rotational axis so this is the a watcher this is a watcher looking waiting for data to come in then it's getting that angle it's outputting that angle into the generic servo and then um, that's going out to the app and then from the app out to the serial command and then to the to the actual servos themselves. So that's um, that's a mapping that I set up for each one of these. Um, there's a lot more things that you can do but I'm just for this video I'm just going to do this for right now. So once you have all this set up, which is pretty simple and it looks complex, I'll, I'll do another video where I'm, I just take one servo and just connect it up so you can see how simple it is to, to, to assemble all the pieces. Um, but anyway, so we'll close this out. Um, the thing to get used to with a game engine versus like a 3D animation package is that since everything is real time, uh, to get things active, you actually have to hit this play button to be before you see anything actually happen. It's really odd and hard to get used to uh, coming from a 3D animation background. So um, what we'll do next is we've already exported this sketch. It's already on the board. So what we have to do now is put it into play mode so that we can then connect it, the board to the servos. So when I hit play, this is also going to activate this inverse schematics character that's already been set up. So I can back out a little bit. You can see it's a whole character here. <coughs> but we're just concerned with the head rotation for now. and. Um, so, I'm going to hit the play button, and the screen kind of changes color. That goes into a scene in the game mode where you actually see the character colorize and stuff. We don't want that. That's not going to help us. So you go back over here to the scene, click on the scene, puts us back into this. So now you can see the characters kind of like in an idle, breathing, moving mode. Um, so you know that the IK is working correctly. Um, so then we go over and we hit connect to connect to the uh, servos. So once I click that, okay, so now you saw the servos down here jump into position. So now when I move this rotational value, 
It's as close to, I mean, I'm watching the head and the servo. You can't see them both at the same time, but they are moving absolutely in, in real time with one another. Um, and then we have the other one. And you can see as I'm tilting the head, the rotational values are changing up here. And then these down here are then grabbing that rotational value. You can also set a minimum angle and a maximum angle here. Um, hopefully all of this we would be controlling inside Easy Builder, so we wouldn't have to deal with uh, this within here. But for now, it's here. It's for 180 degrees. You have a calibrated angle. You have a minimum angle, a maximum angle. In this case, minus 90, positive 90 with zero being in the neutral position. And as I move, then this angle will change based on the input value of x, y, or z on the rotation of value, whichever one we're bringing in. So if I move it down, you might be able to see them move as I move. There you go. So you can see the angle changing as I'm moving over here, as I'm moving the head. And same thing with this one. So we're doing all this live, but once I figure out how to get the animation system going, you should be able to animate all of these and then save that as an output somehow or directly to the easy B and the easy um, easy builder so that you could either do live or do recorded motions from within easy builder which is the ultimate goal here in this whole process um, but anyways uh, hopefully this kind of gets us on the road this path that we've been talking about for a couple of years it seems like now but this is getting us extremely closer but let's figure a way how to get away from having to deal with the Arduino I don't even know how you say it my god can you make a piece of hardware that's harder to say um, does not s roll off the tongue <laughs> but anyways if we can figure a way how to get away from all of this and talk directly maybe with HTTP server um, maybe it's with a plugin I don't know which is the best route to travel, but I think this could be some pretty cool stuff. Anyways, that's it. Got any questions? Just leave a comment.